Alright. We are in uh, section 2.3. Uh, being able to graph equations of lines. Uh, throughout the next coming weeks, we are going to talk about different types of functions. Today, we're going to talk about uh, linear functions or linear equations. And like all other functions, uh, linear functions have what is called the apparent function. The apparent function is y equals x. y equals x, if you were to draw it on a, little, on a graph, our y-intercept is 0, and our slope is 1, or 1 over 1. And it's represented here. Um, we're going to be able to, to uh, make graphs um, through different forms of equations, one of which is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is putting it into the equation of y equals mx plus b. m is defined by its slope, and b is defined by its y-intercept. So now I'm going to if to ask what we do in order to solve or to create a graph using slope-intercept form. First off, we have to solve for y. The second step is once we do that, we have to identify the y-intercept, which is represented by b. Once we do that, we can then plot that starting point at 0 comma b, wherever that would may be located. Afterwards, we can then identify the slope of m in the form of rise over run, plot that point, and then draw our line. Uh, just a second. Sorry about that. All right. So, if I would like to graph this equation, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to get it into a slope-intercept form. So, like the direction said in the beginning, I want to solve for y. So I want to get rid of my minus 4x on the left-hand side of the equal sign, so I'm going to add plus 4x to both sides, so then that cancels, so now I'm left with 3y equals 4x minus 18. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So now I have y equals 4 over 3x minus 6. So our y-intercept is negative 6, so I have to go down to 0, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Plot that point. From this plotted point, I know that I have a slope of 4 over 3, so I place it at the point 0, comma, negative 6, and I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. Plot that point as well. Now that I have two points, I have the capabilities to make a line. So I just connect those two. And that is how we graph that equation. For b, I have f of x equals negative 5 minus 2x. Now, don't get scared over uh, f of x. f of x is the same thing as writing y. So f of x equals y. So if you wanted to write y, that's fine. But what I, what I want to do is I want to reorder this portion here. I want to have my x first, so I'm going to have my negative 2x first minus 5. So then that gets put into point or slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form. So I know that my y-intercept is negative 5, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Plotted the point, and my slope here is a negative 2 over 1. So I can either go down 1, 2 to the right 1, or I can go up 2, 1, 2, and to the left 1. Either way, 
still going to connect those points to make my line. Here, I have an example. The problem states that um, you participate in a 14-mile run and walk for charity. You run partway 6 miles per hour and walk partway 3.5 miles per hour. The model... A model time you walk both in hours, and then you, I'm asking you to graph the equation and then give three possible combinations of running and walking times. So if I look at this graph, everything that's in the y-axis is represented in walking time. Everything that's that can be represented on the x-axis represents the running time. So here's the equation and how you're going to write that. So let's just say that this is r and this is W, so 6R, whatever, how many hours you, you ran, plus 3.5W represents how many hours you walked, will end up equaling the 14 miles. So how I can graph this is what I'm going to do is to determine what it would be on the Y axis I'm gonna set my R equal to zero assuming that I, t I walked the entire race so if I set R equal to zero and then solve for W I would just have 3.5 W equals 14 and 14 divided by 3.5 equals 4. So I'm going to plot this 4 here. <clears throat> Next, I want to find out what it would my time would be if I ran the entire thing. So if I ran the entire thing, that means I walked 0 hours. And so then all I'm going to do here is take 16 divided, uh, 14 divided by 6, and that's somewhere around 2.3. So that what I would say is somewhere right around here. So I have two points, which gives me the capabilities to make a line. So in this line here is any different combinations of running and walking. So let's like say make the assumption that I ran for an hour. So if I ran for one hour, how many hours did I walk? The 14 miles. Well, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3.5W equals 14. If I were to subtract 6 to both sides, I would get 3.5W equals 8. And then 8 divided by 3.5, if I divide up to 3.5, my W would equal something like, like somewhere around 2.3. So if I if so if my R equaled one, my W would equal two point three. You know, and, and I'm looking for other possible combinations like that. Okay. The only thing you couldn't do is my W couldn't be any higher than four, and my R could not be any higher than the two point three three because that would be my, that would max out uh, my. Uh, values for my running time. Next type of equation that we can use for linear functions is standard form. We worked with standard form before. It is represented as ax plus by equals c. And once we write an equation in standard form, we can graph equations in standard form. How we do that is, is what we're looking for is tr trying to find both our y and x-intercepts. We can find the x-intercept by substituting in 0 in for y and then solving for x. Since we solve for x, we can plot x um, finding doing x comma 0 and plotting it on the x-axis. Same thing goes for the y-intercept. We're going to substitute in x in for z or substitute zero in for x, and then solve for y. Once we solve that, we can then plot that 
point on the y-axis. We then will get these two points, and then we can make our line of our graph. So if I had this particular equation, at the moment it is not in standard form, because standard form is ax plus by equals c. So that means I just got to just change this. So it's going to be 6x minus 2y equals 18. So now that I've done that, I'm going to try to find the x-intercept. The x-intercept just means I have to substitute in y for 0. And 2 times 0 is 0, so 6x equals 18 x equals 3. So now I get to plot 3 on the x-axis. Next, I am going to sub try to find the y-intercept, and I can do that by substituting in a 0 in for x, and then solving for y. So if I divide both sides by negative 2, my y then equals negative 9. So I can plot that on the y-axis. Now that I got two points, I can then make my line. For B, this is in standard form. So we don't have to rewrite the equation. We can just then implement our intercepts and then uh, plot those points. So I'm going to try to find the... <coughs> the x-intercept by substituting in y in for 0. I think I put an x there. So now I got 2 thirds x equals 4. So to get rid of this 2 thirds, I'm going to multiply it by its reciprocal, so that cancels, and multiply by 3 halves on the other side. So my x equals 6. So now I just plot 6. 1, 2, 3. 6. And second one that I have to plot is the y-intercept. And now I just have to find where 2 thirds times 0 and minus y equals 4. So I just got to solve for y. 2 thirds times 0 is 0. So now I just got negative y equals 4. I need my y to be positive. So I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative 1. This becomes a positive y. This becomes a negative 4. And I can plot the negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I connect my line. Next, these two graphs deal with vertical and horizontal lines. If you see a, an equation that just has x equals something, that's telling you that it's going to be at a vertical line. This particular vertical line crosses at x equals negative 4. So let's find where negative 4 is in our graph. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. I know that x equals negative 4 there. I know x equals negative 4 here, 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 and so forth. And by connecting all of these lines, I know that this graph is a vertical line where x equals negative 4. Coincide, if I have y equals 8, that is a horizontal line where its y is at 8. So here is where y is at 8. It also y equals 8 here. y also equals 8 here. I connect these points. And that is a horizontal line. So Again, let me reiterate, if you have y equaling a constant number, it's going to be a horizontal line uh, which crosses at the point that it represents. If I have a vertical line, it's going to be x equals a constant number, and it's going to cross where x equals that particular number. Okay? And that is solving equations uh, for linear functions. Hope this helps. Till next time.